Hello, and welcome to Artful Encounters. My name is Shay Thornton Kula, and I'm with the Center for Performing Arts Medicine here at Houston Methodist. Thank you so much for joining us today for Artful Encounters. These are brief art experiences where we talk about a unique topic and enjoy the experience from the comfort of your room. Today's topic I'm very excited about. We're going to be thinking about perception and how perception um, can be utilized in the arts. So for our presentation, Perception, Mistaken Identity, and or Historic Catfish, let's get started by thinking about what perception actually means. Perception is not necessarily reality. Perception can be defined as our recognition and interpretation of sensory information, what we see and how we take that in. Perception also includes how we then respond to that information. We can think of perception as a process where we start by taking in information from our environment and then we use that information to interact with our environment. So, Here's a little comic on the screen, right? What do you see? One sees a six, one sees a nine. We've all had experiences like this. Maybe you saw the six, maybe you saw the nine. An opportunity presented itself where one thing happened and two different people saw it. Um, and the way they saw it, how they perceived that information, then directly impacted what they did next. So now that we are clear on perception, I want to take us back in time. So we go from this sweet little comic to England, okay? Perception before the advent of photography. On the screen here, you'll see work from one of my favorite artists, Hans Holbein. Hans Holbein was born somewhere between 1497 and 1498 and died in 1543. Um, he was a German painter, a draftsman, a designer, and he was renowned for his precise renderings of in his drawings. So the way that he saw the world, he made sure that his drawings were incredibly accurate, right? That was his main skill. Um, around 1533, Holbein was already starting to paint court personalities, and about four years after that, he entered. He officially entered the service of King Henry VIII of England. Now we'll talk about King Henry VIII in a little bit, um, but between 1533 and 1543, when he died of the plague, it is believed that he executed approximately 150 portraits. So what is unique when we look at Holbein's art? is that he made a significant impact in the taste of the court, right? Um, what was seen as beautiful, what was seen as less than, and also because he's renowned for his realism. When we, as people today, look back at this time in history, these are the images that we see. So this is how we believe these people um, existed. So a little exercise. We are going to look at an image right here. Anne of Cleves. I'm going to give you a minute and I'll go quiet and I want you to answer these four questions. You can either write them down, put them in your notes section on your phone, or just think about it. The first is, what do you see? Now that you've spent a little bit of time taking that in, Look again, and what makes you think or believe that? So we've been looking at this image a few seconds now, right? Is there anything new that you notice? Maybe that didn't, you didn't see at the beginning. Okay, and here's the hard one. Is she beautiful? So I want you to take in those answers, what you originally perceived, as I tell you a little story about the woman that you see in front of you. So going back to King Henry VIII, he had recently lost his third wife. King Henry VIII was known for being married to Catherine of Aragon, who he then divorced, then he moved to Anne Boleyn, to who he beheaded, then he moved to Jane Seymour. Jane Seymour was believed to be the true love of his life. Um, Jane had given him a son, but now he needed to secure his dynasty with another. Only problem here is that Jane Seymour had passed away in childbirth. So he had to look further. Now the problem here is, when you're the monarch, you can't necessarily go traveling around Europe to find your new bride. 
Hans Holbein went to Germany, he made this incredible portrait and sent it back to King Henry. And what he perceived from this image is that she was incredibly beautiful. She was regal, she was pure. He was very interested in making this young woman his next bride. Now, let's talk about perception. Anne travels from, from Germany all the way to England. She doesn't speak the language. She doesn't necessarily know what's going on. She's heard about his previous wives. So her perception of King Henry VIII wasn't necessarily glowing. Um, when she was on her way to London, Anne was surprised by a group of masked men led by a tall, burly, middle-aged man who tried to kiss her. Anne, absolutely unused to this behavior, had no idea what was going on, pushed him away in bewilderment and embarrassment. She had actually rejected Henry himself, who was not impressed by her lack of sophistication. See, King Henry VIII believed that true love could conquer anything and that she was going to see through this mask and just automatically know that this was to be her beloved. Um, according to this tradition, the would-be bride would absolutely fall in love at first sight and swoon into the arms. However, from Anne's perspective, she had no idea. Now, this kind of lack of understanding, the, the miscommunication here, the perceptions that didn't match up, set off a very low series of events. King Henry VIII said Anne was um, absolutely, he would never want to marry her. He ended up marrying her, tried to consummate the marriage for th four days before he absolutely quit, and eventually divorced Anne of Cleves after just a few months. She probably spared herself with that. So let's look at the perception here of King Henry VIII, right? So here's another Hans Holbein image. I'm going to go quiet for a little bit, and we are going to answer these four questions. Take a moment. Look at Hans Holbein's portrait of King Henry VIII and say and answer, what do you see? Now, what makes you think or believe that? Is there anything new that you notice now? And my kicker, is he beautiful? So the perception here that King Henry wanted Hans Holbein to do with this piece of artwork um, was that he, he was this big, broad, healthy king. However, in reality, comparisons of surviving sets of his armor showed that his legs were much shorter than the reality that was perceived in this painting. The painting also shows Henry as young and full of health, where in truth he was in his 40s, he was badly injured earlier that year in a tilt yard accident, and he was already suffering from health problems that would affect him for the latter part of his life. So while King Henry used perception and used Hans Holbein to try to figure out, you know, what was next for him, he also wanted to distort that perception for everyone else, utilizing things like costume, right? So the, the, the width of his shoulders, um, how he was standing, the jewels on him to make other people perceive him as strong to everything from enhancing height, um, changing colors around, really making him look in his prime when he might not have actually been there. So as we wrap up the idea of perception versus reality, I think it's a, it's a unique idea to utilize the concept of perception through the arts, right? So what we see and then how, how we perceive that and how we interact with our environment. Next time that you're in the hospital, maybe you see some of the artwork on the walls, um, where, whether you're scrolling through a gallery online or you go visit an arts institution, I encourage you to look and think about what you're perceiving and what the reality of that situation was. Thank you so much for joining us for Artful Encounters. We appreciate your time and hope that you've learned something new or possibly are going to experience something or perceive something to be different. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Signing off from the Center for Performing Arts Medicine.